Hello, Josh Morford. How are you today? Welcome to the show, man. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, now, Josh, of course, you are the man behind the uh, the now famous Space Jams Festival. Uh, every every man and his dog should know what Space Jams is, but for the few people out there that have not heard of it, can you please explain what Space Jams is, how it got started, and if you have received a cease and desist letter from the original writer yeah. of the Space Jam movie? <laughs> no, uh, well, I can confirm that I haven't, haven't had that. Um, but we did change our design in case we did uh, receive one of those letters. So no, the design course. changed, I think, in volume three, which is the last one we had. Um, okay. But yeah, it started out so back in March when um, all uh, my me and my friends lost work because we're all musos like yeah. full time. Uh, some some just casual or part time, but uh, I'm a full time muso, so rely completely on gigs um, to sustain my living. And they were obviously cut out pretty quickly, yeah. and. Yeah. You could see it coming for a week or two, you know, as like COVID was slowly uh, yeah. entering every part of the world. And it's like, okay, this is, uh, is <laughs> going to happen sooner or later. We're just going to be out of work. And yeah, I just thought that it might be fun, uh, you know, just for some positive vibes um, as opposed to everything that uh, negative that was sort of going on at that time, just to uh, get... Um, me and a bunch of mates to live stream all one after another. Um, Cause uh, yeah, we were sort of starting to live stream a few of us um, like from, from live gigs anyway. And yeah. just thought, Oh, just, you know, just do some bedroom gigs or uh, studio gigs or whatever. And um, sort of a whole bunch of mates said yes. And then I sort of extended that invitation out to uh, like, other bands that I knew and they all said yes. And then all of a sudden it was like 30 pretty sweet local artists on a, on a little oh, lineup. Yeah. Um, and mm, I think it was all like original musicians. I was just, uh, just reaching out to the original community. And, um, yeah. and then after that first one went ahead, which was a real DIY, um, it was just me doing like real poor graphic design work <laughs> and like, just uh, sort of promoting it all from my personal socials. Um, uh, other artists and um, so other artists were contacting me to see if they could be on the next one. Yeah. If yeah, yeah. I was going to continue. And um, uh, like I saw that, uh, you know, like Isolade was doing the same thing basically, but on like a much larger level mm. and they were doing it weekly. So I thought, oh yeah, maybe I could, continue this thing uh on a monthly basis and um yeah just sort of grew from there i uh, applied for a grant so that i could pay for um some marketing and uh, a website and a designer and stuff and um and some filming so um and got that thanks to the music development office and um yeah so we're able to oh who is calling me what a, what a time. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, some people, some people. Some people, they just think you can, they can call at any, <laughs> at any point. <laughs> um, yeah, so it sort of like continued from there. And um, now we're in, entering into like the live phase, which is pretty cool. We've got, um, uh, we haven't actually made any announcements but um, yeah, we've cool. got. So is this is this the first uh, yeah, first announcement here? <laughs> well, I'm not, making, I'm not making. Wow. I'm not. I'm not making an announcement, but I'm making an announcement. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, not wink, making wink, an announcement. Wink, wink. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah but uh, our first uh, actual live festival will be happening in the next um, next uh, month or so. I think. Awesome. Oh yeah. So yeah, just um, just locking in a headliner. Um, yeah, literally today, locking in a headliner. So it's like, um, yeah, I can't really say too much because yeah, yeah. you don't know if it's actually going to go ahead or not. But um, uh, but we definitely have a venue, definitely have a date and a time booked, and that'll be probably all announced um, 
this week at some point, which would be mm-hmm. cool. Hell yeah. Okay, so have you have you kind of looked at um, other organisations like Sunny Side Uploads and Isolate and then kind of taken a few tips and tricks off of them? Yeah, trying. Um, I mean, they all sort of, uh, they're all doing slightly different things, which is cool. Um, yeah. But all, all just trying to um, keep the music community thriving and yeah. um, and bringing something to music lovers as well, as well as, uh, you know, trying to raise some funds for much needed organisations, which is, um, you know, what the music industry seems to be doing a lot of these days, which is really cool. Um, full of a bunch of giving people. It's nice. Um, yeah. But yeah. Even, even, though, even though the arts, the arts industry in Australia doesn't really get a, a good helping hand from the, the current government. Yeah. Any government <laughs> ever. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> it's a bit rough, but um, yeah, uh, that's the way it is, I guess. But yeah, definitely um, looked at Isolade because I mean, they would, basically doing the exact same thing, but just on a much larger um, yeah. scale. Um, so it was sort of looking as to uh, how they were um, doing all their live streaming and stuff. Um, look to sunny side uploads for, um, cause, cause now we're going to move into a live format. I've got to look into possible possibly live streaming that live gig and um and so getting good quality audio and good quality visuals as well and um yeah but all those guys are doing such great things and knockoff sessions as well and um yeah so sort of, i hope hope those things continue in one form or another um but it certainly helps the music community and music lovers in general like you can oh, see yeah, those definitely. those things are quite popular and a lot of people are watching so it's, it's good yeah uh, so is your decision to move to a to a live format kind of your way of continuing uh space jams into the future post covid yeah i suppose so um i've always kind of wanted to do some sort of festival thing yeah. And then this uh, opportunity kind of presented itself um, or kind of just expanded into what it is now. And now I kind of have that opportunity. Um, Space Jams kind of has, yeah, a little bit of a name. Like people, like um, people have been following it now for a few months and um, it's sort of, yeah, hmm. growing like slowly, <laughs> but um getting there and um by taking it into that live format that's uh yeah that's what music's all about is uh Definitely. seeing it seeing it live and um experiencing it with other people so i'm pretty excited about that change yeah well well i can tell people um definitely enjoy what you're doing so the idea of you continuing it i'm sure is going to resonate very well with a lot of people um so hopefully yeah you keep the motivation to keep doing that post COVID. Um, I think, I definitely think live streaming, we should, we should do that more just, just for everyone. Um, I'm trying to tell bands more now to just, just live stream their gigs. Um, just, just get their footprint out there more. Um, it's an amazing yeah. piece of technology that, uh, that, that, uh, that we're able to use, you know, you can play a gig and get your music straight into people's, you know, living room or their bedrooms and, and they, and they see you and everything. Obviously, it's it's uh, not like being at the gig yourself, but it's it's um, second best thing for sure. A lot of people can't can't make live gigs uh, for a bunch of reasons. So yeah, yeah. live streaming is um, is definitely pretty cool. Um, you're right; it doesn't beat being there. Yeah, but. Um, <laughs> I think it's not going to deter people from being there either. I think if yeah, anything, it yeah. just sort of, um, it just kind of, uh, I think it promotes the the music community as a whole uh, on a larger scale, I reckon. Definitely. Yeah. I, I don't think it takes anything away. Um, I did the, the bands I was talk, talking to, they did mention they were a little worried that, you know, if they live stream their gigs, people won't come. Um, 
but I don't I don't think that's an issue. If you if you like a if you like and enjoy a band, you're going to you know make an effort to go and see them um, as best as as best as you can. Um, yeah, I mean we're still like um because I've got a little little team with me now on Space Jams, and we're still debating that actually with this uh, with our first live festival that we're doing yeah. um, whether we whether we do live stream it at the time or if we um, or if we just film it and then um, like put it up at a, yeah. at a later date uh, whether live streaming it <clears throat> would like if people would just go ah oh, it's going to be live streamed I'll just watch it at home from my couch that's cool yeah, yeah. I think there's probably a percentage of people who might do that and then there's probably another percentage of people who, who never heard about the gig in the first place. And then they find it um, perhaps when they are, are looking online and, and they see this live stream happening and like, Oh yeah, that's cool. I might go to that next time. Yeah. You know, yeah, uh, definitely, it's definitely. sort of, it's hard to know what percentage of people would do either or, and uh, if it would actually, um, if it's a pro or a con, um, overall to, mm. to do the live stream and it probably differs from, from gig to gig, from yeah. time to time, from place to place. It's a, but I, I think it's a overall pretty healthy thing for the, yeah. for the industry. Yeah. Yeah. De yeah, definitely. Well, if you, you know, if you have a, a, a 250 capacity venue and you sell out all those tickets, but then you also live stream it and get an extra 500 people watching that, that's um, yeah. You've just doubled the numbers of people who have attended that show. Um, so I think that's just basic good business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, on a, yeah. On that, on that sort of level, I, yeah, I think it works. Yeah. So um, yeah, no, I'm look, I'm looking forward to that. Um, hopefully, I can get down and make it. Cause that, yeah, that'd be good. Um, obviously, you're not going to give us any hints to to who's playing the show. Um, but your your previous no, your previous live streams, you had um, headliners like West Theberton, Towns, um, The Wanderers, um, all all amazing bands. Um, so I'm, I'm sure you've got, yeah, you've got some good bands uh, lined up and in mind for the, for the first uh, live one. Yeah. Trying yeah. to keep it, we're keeping it all local um, awesome. to start awesome. with. Um, and then we might extend out to inter, interstate acts at a later date, but um, of course. see how we go with this first one. As long as and, they're not yeah, from keeping Victoria. it all local. Yeah, no, that will not be happening anytime soon. Um, but um, yeah, keeping it local and trying to keep, um, you know, try to support the bands that supported me in the first place yeah. Um, yeah. by, yeah, having having artists who have already hopped on a Space Jams and donated their time for, for the music community and music lovers in SA. Um, uh, and yeah, by getting them on, on one of these lineups, well, at least the first one. So it'll be, it should, it should be a whole bunch of acts who you've already seen play on mm. space jams before. Awesome. Yeah. And I, um, I'm excited to, yeah, see it all sort of unfold. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I think um, we should definitely look at the, the positives for this lockdown. I think it's a, a great time to really focus on more local acts uh, and local music. Um, I know the the Gov in particular uh, are going to be making the rest of the year uh, focusing on more local acts and, and local musicians. Um, obviously, that's just way easier than, than shipping in an international band or an interstate band, sorry. Um, but yeah, I see it as a great opportunity just to help the, the, local, the local scene and the local community. Yeah, well, you see, you've seen a whole bunch of gigs like going up now um, and it's all just like all these legendary local artists, mm. um, who put on like just as good a show as any interstate band that's going to come through. And, um, yeah, you're right. It's going to be, it's going to be good for the local community to just, just kind of stick local for a little while. Yeah. Hell yeah. Definitely. Yeah, because um, we have so much talent here. Like, um, if I've learnt one thing through Space Jams, um, it's how much talent we have in this uh, in this state. It's pretty incredible, and how much um, you know, they're willing to sort of go go above and beyond um what's required. Like some of these artists, I don't know if, I don't know how much you've caught of uh, of Space Jams, but 
some of the artists put in some unbelievable effort into their live stream. Oh, yeah. Like uh, <laughs> their audio quality, their their visual quality, plus their visual setup is, um, yeah, when, you know, when I first started it, I was kind of just uh, imagining a whole bunch of people just um, just playing acoustic guitar, singing yeah, yeah. from their bedrooms or whatever. And then it's kind of turned into, um, yeah, people putting in some some awesome effort mm. into it. Yeah. Um, yo, that, that's all awesome. local artists, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so you're able to see, so these bands are able to be uh, even more creative than what they what they usually are because they work out a whole like theatrical um, set and everything. Yeah. It's like, yeah, audio yeah. and visual. Sometimes with, um, with those restrictions put in, like, uh, you know, if you're creatively confined, sometimes you can be more creative, which mm. is super cool. Like, um, uh, and I mean, and going with the theme of like, um, like isolation and quarantine and stuff too. Like, um, this band, uh, I don't know if you've heard of them, a razor description. Um, uh-huh. this is just one of, one of many who've sort of gone above and beyond. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're set up, I reckon, in like volume. I reckon it might have been volume two um, that they hopped on board. They were in like a corridor, um, which was just lit up by blue. So it's just a blue lit corridor, and they were all wearing like gas masks and goggles and stuff. And they're like this soul funk. Um, fusion like jazz fusion kind of um instrumental band and they're in incredibly tight and talented players and it's just like super cool to watch i loved it and there's a whole bunch of that sort of stuff that happens like at each each space jams yeah everyone yeah. just gets real creative um now josh what is so what's your background in in the adelaide scene um so I have been uh, in a bunch of bands since I was a teenager. Um, my, probably like two years ago, I quit my job. Yeah, I spent four years at uni, uh, four years in the workforce being an engineer. And, uh, and after eight years of all that, I realized that I didn't like it at any point. Like I didn't really enjoy it at any point. What was I doing? Yeah, um, yeah it's pro- product of the system mm. and being a musician is not a safe job. So no. um, I sort of, yeah, took the risk and went, oh, I want to be like, uh, I want to do what I enjoy rather than yeah. Oh, yeah. what I'm supposed to do. And um, uh, yeah, just went for it, quit my job, and started, um, yeah, just doing like, there's only mostly cover gigs, but um, I'd be doing like three, four, five a week. Mm. Um, and uh, that was, that was uh, um, then my like, uh, my way of life, I suppose. And then um, obviously being in a couple of original bands as well um, along the way, just doing my original gigs here and there. So one of the bands is called Talk. Um, then we've been around for maybe like four years or something. Um, and just have another couple of things in the in the works. I've just started um, playing guitar in Laura Hill's band as well. Oh, That's kind of exciting. Yeah. But also possibly something that may not have occurred had um, like isolation not being in place and stuff um, just because I probably would have been still in uh, like um, keeping keeping on doing what I was previously doing and probably didn't wouldn't have had time to have done it so that's nice to branch out and do something a little bit different um, for myself and as well as Space Jams um, yeah so that's a uh, basically my part in the music community that's who that's who josh morford is then yeah. oh i um i, I run a 
a radio show as well. I do um, uh, a show called Friday Breakfast on 3D Radio. Oh, wow. Um, you I've do been that? doing oh, okay. that for... I didn't, I didn't realize yeah. as well. A little, little <laughs> detail you just leave until the end there. Yeah. You may recognize this sultry voice from yeah, the yeah. 6 to 9 a.m. slot on 93.7 FM. <laughs> yeah, so I do that with my mate Michael. Um, uh, and that's been lots of fun. I think we've been doing that for about 10 years or something. Oh, wow. Do you know, um, do you know um, James? Jimmy? Jimmy C? Jimmy! Yeah. No, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't, I don't okay. know. Maybe I do. But um, okay. yeah, he's got his own not, show. He had uh, his own show on Fresh. Oh, on Fresh. No, I'm yeah, not yeah. too close with the uh, Fresh crew um, or like Radio Adelaide or anything. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, but do love community radio as well. I think that's um that's underrated in the. Oh, definitely, definitely. In, yeah. In the scene. I did a little, um, little like apprenticeship at PBA FM up in uh, up here in Salisbury. Ah, uh, cool. Uh, so that was, yep. that was quite nice. I had my own little show for a little bit, and that was yeah, it's it, it's fun, you know, being being on air and, and chatting and and band. And then you and started this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Is, it, is that sort of how you how you got started on this? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It went from yeah, pretty much uh, the show. or well, the show we had was called the Oz Underground Show. Um, yep. And then I guess yeah, kind of just transferred that to the to the internet and and I continued with that. Um, but yeah, I found yeah, I, I love I love the music scene here. It's amazing. I, I remember when I first uh, first moved here from Queensland a few years ago. Um, I loved how tight knit and welcoming everything, everybody, and everything was, um, and how willing people were to sit down and and uh, be interviewed by some random uh, uh, long haired uh, long haired kid. Uh, so I just thought that was that was quite lovely. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, it is. It, it is a really nice community. Yeah. I, mean, I yeah. um I moved to Melbourne for a, a couple of years for for work, um and when I got back was I'd say when I really started honing in properly on the on the SA music community and um I know you sort of always think that like uh everyone might be a bit um. You know, have their own little pockets of like uh, their own little scenes and little clicks whatnot yeah. that you know yeah the clicks that's the right word um there, there are but, those there are those but they're not as um ruthless as probably what you'd find in victoria or, or new south wales they're still welcoming absolutely yeah yeah uh, yeah which is uh, absolutely amazing. yeah everyone has a little bit it's of very supportive yeah definitely yeah definitely. Um, how are you? How are you handling isolation? Obviously, we're somewhat coming out of it now. But um, how did you? Yeah, how did you deal with just uh, you know, obviously not being able to see friends or, or family or or work as much? Well, I spent six months in a caravan last year with, but I've got two little kids mm. and um, a partner, and we spent six months in a caravan last year. So that was, I feel like that was just good good practice yeah <laughs> um yeah just traveling west oz and the, when we went into isolation it was kind of um well it wasn't even proper isolation was it but we we did self out isolate especially because we got kids so it's just like you can't stop them licking everything and yeah. picking their nose and what well, you know um so uh yeah we just sort of spent however long like four weeks at home not seeing anyone and uh and a house compared to a caravan is plenty of space for a couple of yeah. little brats to to run around so it was um yeah we we weren't too bad off i reckon and um i just kept trying to live stream on on weekends i would uh because <clears throat> i'd usually have about three four five gigs a weekend anyway that i'd try get um you know i'd tell people about if they wanted to come along and and check it out um so i kind of i tried to continue that with the live streaming side of things so i just say but i tried to get creative because i didn't have um a whole like you know you didn't have pubs you could go to or whatever so like i'd do um just a regular uh gig from the rumpus room I did a couple of gigs out the front of my house 
um, and the street like would sort of come and socially distance and <laughs> that was fun. Um, I'd do like a gig on the beach or like uh, from, I'd do a ukulele gig from, from a wardrobe. Oh, awesome. Um, and I'm not very good at the ukulele, but I, I got about half an hour's worth of songs together. Yeah. yeah. So we tried to sort of continue life as normal uh, as with as much normality as we could. So it's, yeah, it was kind of nice to have the break, to be honest. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure a few people. Uh, yeah, you, you seem like a man that wouldn't be looking at the positive side of it and everything and trying, trying to stay happy and healthy <laughs> during it. Yeah, I try. <laughs> it doesn't always work out that way, but yeah, no, you're better off looking at the positives. Um, uh, yeah, looking yeah. at the negatives is a look, look at the negatives in a like a problem solution way. Um, but there's no point in, uh, yeah, sort of just. I mean, you can you can sort of get get a bit down about stuff and not help it, but yeah, if you can if you can start to um, kind of mindfully look at the positive side of things and, and actually come up with a solution and do something about it. And, um, then yeah, positives come out of that, you know, like I'm pretty, I'm very stoked that I'm able to bring space jams to people and, um, and that we're, you know, moving it onto a live format now, like Mm. that sort of thing is really exciting and, uh, and brings me a lot of joy and, value feels like you know <laughs> this, this generation is sort of like you need value in 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 life and um, yeah. whatever yeah. they're doing and uh and this certainly like i feel like i i get that from from organizing space jams um and that wouldn't have come without like trying to think of a, a solution or a you know a temporary like positive way of positive positive spin on on like a problem that we're having you know yeah yeah so yeah (laughs) try try to think in the in the positive way and see what comes of it yeah are you um are you hopeful for the future of the the local art scene and the industry as a whole yeah i mean you're always going to have creatives so like um yeah, yeah. There's a lot. Again, there's a lot. There's a lot to complain about with like funding and um, yeah, of course, of course. and uh, and job opportunity and the industry as a whole and whatnot. But at the end of the day, I mean, um, creatives and musicians and artists are a resilient mob, and it'll yeah you know, that uh, the creative industry will just find a way regardless it would just be nice if um if it was a bit easier and yeah recognized yeah, as as uh well as essential i suppose yeah definitely <laughs> well yeah. I, I i'm in the firm belief that it is essential um obviously a world without you know music and live gigs would be utterly utterly depressing um it's <laughs> yeah it's just a shame it's not as big of a focus as what we would want it to be. Yeah, no, you're right there. Mm. Um, yeah, okay. But um, yeah, so as someone who I guess is a bit of a, well, you're now a bit of an industry insider, um, just kind of just looking at how, how I guess our government and our, our state government have been approaching uh, just the whole the whole issue with, um, I mean, I mean, well, they did 250 million as a stimulus package for the for the arts art sector um do you think that's enough uh i mean when you start comparing it you know like um you know the latest one is the comparison to the aviation industry and it's uh and the numbers speak for themselves like um that you know that just that comparison is unfair um as a as a direct comparison not saying that um, you know 250 million isn't enough, or however much aviation got is too much, or whatever it might be. But the direct comparison is um, is unfair. Mm-hmm. So um, of course, yeah. when you see that sort of thing, it's like it feels a little bit um, 
it's not being treated the same. Like 250 million does sound like a lot of money. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's not as much as some sectors are getting, but yeah. Do, I mean, do you think, I don't, do you think um, the industry is under attack at all? Because personally, personally, as a, as a journalist, I, I look at, uh, journalist, I say, I look at how, <laughs> how, um, how the government has treated, you know, media, how they've treated the ABC and, and other companies like that. And it doesn't, it doesn't look nice. It doesn't seem hopeful. Um, it, it makes me a little bit worried personally. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe in the, the positive side inside of me and the, uh, the ignorant just chooses to not, uh, not look at it too much. Yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, I sort of wish that I was a bit more politically inclined. Um, I just tend to tend to look into that stuff and just yeah, of course. like get overwhelmed with negativity. Um, Cause yeah, you can start looking at those numbers and how the uh, art sector is being treated and, you know, what funding is being cut, like, you know, sort of uh, forget about COVID, just the general like budget year to year things being cut um, that seem to seem to matter to everyone except for I don't know, lobbyists like coal mining industry and stuff that's just just it it's out of this world that that anyone would see a future in some of those things and yet you know like funding to um to like uh arts degrees and um and teaching and stuff like that is just uh just seems to be placed down the priority list a bit um but again i mean i'm i'm no professional in that area but that's when i start looking into it that is how it seems to be and it's not like the industry is under attack i would say it's more just like it's not a priority and the wrong things are being prioritized yeah. just things that are not sustainable at all yeah. and that just doesn't make sense um i mean my my four-year-old kid was uh talking to me about um uh like something the other day i can't i can't remember <laughs> um something to do with animals going extinct and he, he was just like, why don't we just stop hurting the animals, dad? And I was like, you know what? It, it's that simple. It is literally that simple. Um, like, you know, forget about economy, forget about jobs, forget about whatever else the crap, uh, like um, whatever other crap the, the government thinks is important. Um, you need to focus on sustainability, uh, like human uh, humanitarianism, um, environment and, uh, like diversity, like all those, all those important issues really need to just come together and jobs and, um, the economy that shit will sort itself out. <laughs> it will. If yeah, you look yeah. at, if you look at the things that matter, um, the rest will sort itself out. Like, it, yeah. When you start looking into it, it's, um, yeah, I don't know whether I would use, uh, like personally, I wouldn't use the word um, like we're under attack, but yeah, priorities are just mm. all sorts of wrong. And yeah, the wrong people are leading the world, you know? It's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, because obviously... But it's also not that easy because, um, you know, most, I'm a firm believer that most people have, um, have uh, good intentions but um, a lot of systems just aren't built to um, to or systems were built like say a hundred years ago and times have changed <laughs> and yeah, those systems definitely. just have not yeah because obviously as a as a father you'd be thinking about what world your children are going to be um, inheriting uh, and, and obviously that would play on your mind a little bit absolutely <laughs> uh. Yeah, uh, I made some huge changes a few years ago when my first um, child was born, and um, 
because yeah, you, you kind of things that you've always known or um, or have semi thought about but just ignored because because you can. Um, yeah. All of a sudden, when you have a kid, it's like, oh, hang on, <laughs> uh, I want to teach them to do the right thing. And I'm not doing the right thing half the time, you know, like that old saying, um, I don't know if it's an old saying, but, um, uh, whatever, whatever action you do has, is like a vote towards how you want the world to, to be. So like, Mm -hmm. if I say taking music, live music, for example, um, if I was to sit at home on the couch instead of, um, and watch some crappy uh, reality TV show instead of going out to see a live a live band or something I I can't then take to social media and go like everyone needs to support the live music industry man because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not doing that myself so you gotta with every like all your actions is like a vote for um, how you want the world to uh, you know be run or um be the change that you uh, want to see in the world that's exactly it and when um you know that but then when you have a kid it's like oh <laughs> actually i literally have to teach that and i have to i have to be i have to set that example so i made some huge changes a, a, a few years back and yeah I sort of music um managed to just stay consistent and i know that like i deeply care about music which is um which is kind of cool yeah Oh yeah, it must be enlightening to be a father then. Oh yeah, enlightening and hard, <laughs> all sorts. It's a roller coaster. Of course, of course. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, I think we're almost out of time, Josh. Oh well, it's been a pleasure. It has been. It's, it's been wonderful chatting to you. Um, which which will be uh, one of the first venues that that you're going to be hitting up and 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 enjoying a beer with your mate mates. Sir. Um. Well, I've been to a few cafes already. Um. Mm. I'm actually repping. I'm repping a Boy and Bloom T-shirt. Actually, Boy and Bloom. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, wherever it is, there it is. Yeah, that's that's my brother's cafe. The little sneaky, uh, un unashamed plug there. <laughs> yeah, um, shout out! Shout out! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they they have a place. Um, yeah, I've been to Cream and uh, and Goodness in like I I live in Maslins, so um my local is uh like Goodness in Oldinga. I I hit that, but um yeah, pub. I haven't actually been to a pub yet. Have I? I'm just trying to think. I'm going to a pub this this Friday, but it's only because I'm gigging there. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's my yeah. first, my first, my first proper non-private show oh. um, gig back since COVID. Yeah, I've had a twenty-first and another birthday party, I think, but um, uh, yeah, I haven't I haven't played a a pub show yet. So this is the first of hopefully quite a few more to come rolling back in. Yeah, hell yeah. Um... Do you have yeah. a do you have a favourite venue in Adelaide? I love the Grace the Cranker. Grace, yeah. um, I actually really like Lion Arts Factory. Um, I like Jive, uh, but um, you know those like Lion Arts and Jive. You sort of that's like a ticketed show. You got to go yeah. um, see. Um, whereas like just going to see, uh, just going to hang out at a pub uh, you can't beat like the Grace. Um, and the Cranker, mm. Exeter, you know, yeah, love those places. All the favourites, awesome. Um, what about yours? Mine, uh, pretty much all that you mentioned there. All of them. <laughs> my my favourite are all yeah. of them. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have like named just one or two. It's 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 all of them. It's a whole package. It's all yeah, exactly. That's it. All of them. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Well. Um, so you've got so you've got the live the live space jams planned. Um, do you have a do you have an estimated date at all for that? Um, yeah, it'll be mid August. So I'll be um okay. should be announcing the date this week, and 
and hopefully announcing the headliner um, shortly after that. Awesome. Yeah. Do you think it'll be a full capacity gig? Yeah. 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 Oh, That'll sorry. Cool. You mean um, uh, you mean full capacity? Um. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's out of everyone's hands. But um, mm. at the moment, the place where uh, we've booked is at half capacity, and okay. they said if um if, like, and I think most venues are probably in a similar boat. Um, uh, if South Australia keeps on going the way it is, then restrictions will be completely lifted. Well, not completely, but restrictions will be lifted enough um, to allow full capacity, which would be great. And I reckon yeah. either way, at half capacity or full, I think this show will be sold out with the lineup that, that I've got. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, big, we got so you big want, So you want to get in hopes. there quick. Hell yeah. yeah. That's yeah. right. <laughs> All right, we've got, big, we've got big hopes for the, uh, for the, for the show then. Big expectations. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I should probably lower them just in yeah. case. But um, <laughs> man, that is like I've got. Um, there's a couple of lineup options that I've got, uh, and I just have to have to confirm sort of one or the other. Uh, I, either way, it's a it's a mean it's a mean lineup. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm pumped. All right, Josh. Uh, where Me can too. people? <laughs> Where can people uh, find out more about Space Jams and and look at all the, the live streams? So you can check um, socials, uh, which is Space Jams Fest, like on Instagram. Um, you can see sort of the previous lineups that we've had and everything. And on Facebook as well, it's very similar, but we, we have been a Instagram live streaming festival. So sort of... Um, Primarily, more yeah. focused on Instagram. Oh. Um, we have a website uh, which was designed by the fabulous Nick Nancaro of Hand to Sky Designs, who does an awesome job. He, um, yeah, he was just going to help me out anyway. Um, just doing a real simple website that I yeah, could yeah. manage myself, and then I managed to get this um, some money to pay him, and um, he's been unbelievable. He's like. Yeah, I'll just look after the whole thing and um, make it real gnarly. So it feels good that I've been able to, because he was out of work as well, being a, a website creator. So um, at the start of COVID and isolation, so it was nice that the MDO could give me some money to help the like the art sector in, yeah. you know, because a lot of people kind of tend to think like directly to musicians and stuff. You know, web creators were struggling too. So it's nice yeah, that I could help, the help him out. Yeah. Um, it's especially nice that he was just going to help me out anyway, you know, yeah. and then I could help him out more. Um, uh, uh, so he designed that website, spacejamsfest.com.au. And that's got um, like all the previous lineups and that'll have everything you need to know about the next Space Jams coming up. Oh yeah. All right. Well, we will drop the, the link for that website in the description for this. Um, but with that, Josh, absolute pleasure chatting to you, man. And uh, I'll see you at the, uh, at the first live Space Jams Festival in August. Awesome. Thanks, Jordan. Really appreciate the chat, man. Hell yeah, man. All right. Thank you, Josh Morfitt of Space Jams. Cheers.